Welcome to Grandad's Storytime. Please like and subscribe. I post new content every day. Paddington's Garden by Michael Bond and Fred Banbury One day Paddington decided to make a list of all the nice things there were about being a bear and living with the Browns at number 32 Windsor Gardens. It was a long list and he'd almost reached the end of the paper when he suddenly realised he'd left out one of the nicest things of all, the garden itself. Paddington liked the Browns' garden. It was quiet and peaceful, and there were times when it might not have been in London at all. But nice gardens usually mean a lot of hard work, and after a day at his office, Mr Brown often wished it wasn't quite so large. It was Mrs Brown who through the first thought of giving Jonathan, Judy and Paddington a piece each of their own. It will keep them out of mischief, she said, and it will help you at the same time. So Mr Brown marked out three squares, and to make it more exciting he said he would give a prize to whoever had the best idea. Early next morning all three set to work. Judy thought she would grow some flowers, and Jonathan started to make a paved garden. But Paddington didn't know what to do. Gardening was much harder than it looked, especially with paws, and he soon grew tired of digging. In the end, he decided to do some shopping. He had some savings left over from his pocket money, and he bought a wheelbarrow, a trowel, and a large packet of assorted seeds. It seemed very good value indeed, especially as he still had two pence left over. The shopkeeper told him that when planning a new garden, it was a good idea to stand somewhere away, first in order to picture what it would look like when it was finished. So, taking a jar of his best chunky marmalade, Paddington set out to visit the nearby building site. By the time he got there, in the middle of the morning, and as the men were all at their tea break, he sat down on a pile of bricks, put the jar of marmalade on a wooden platform for safety, and then peered hopefully towards the Browns' garden. After sitting there for some time without getting a single idea, Paddington decided to try taking a short walk instead. When he got back, his eyes nearly popped out. A man was emptying the concrete mixer on the very spot where he'd left his jar of chunky marmalade. At that moment, the foreman came round the corner, and seeing the look on Paddington's face, he stopped to ask what was wrong. Paddington pointed to the pile of wet cement. All my chunks have been buried, he exclaimed hotly. The foreman called his men together. There's a young bear gentleman here who's lost some very valuable chunks, he said urgently. They set to work clearing the cement. Soon the ground was covered with small piles. But still there was no sign of Paddington's jar. Suddenly there was a whirring sound from somewhere overhead and to Paddington's surprise, a platform landed at his feet. "'My marmalade!' he exclaimed thankfully. "'Your marmalade?' echoed the foreman, staring at the jar. "'Did you say marmalade?' "'That's right,' said Paddington. "'I put it there ready for my tea break. "'It must have been taken up by mistake.' It was the foreman's turn to look, as if he could hardly believe his eyes. That special quick drying cement, he wailed, is probably going to be rock hard already, ruined by a bear's marmalade. No one will give me two pence for it now. Paddington opened his suitcase and felt into his secret compartment. I will, he said eagerly. Paddington took the lumps of concrete home in his wheelbarrow and worked hard in his garden for the rest of the day. When the builders saw the rockery he had made with the concrete, they were most impressed and gave Paddington several plants to finish it off for the time being, until his seeds started to grow. Paddington's rockery fitted so well with Jonathan's paved garden and Judy's flower bed, it looked as if though the whole thing had been planned. Mr Brown was so pleased, he decided to give them all extra week's pocket money and that evening they celebrated by giving tea in the new garden. 
After it was over, Paddington stayed on for a while in order to finish off his list of all the nice things that were being a bear and living at number 32 Windsor Gardens. He had one more important item to add. My rockery. Then he signed his name and added his special paw print. Just to show it was genuine. The end. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, please give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe, it's free, to support us and allow us to create more great content.